today we have rain. Um, let's see. Uh, last Saturday it was about 64 degrees, and Saturday was pretty mild too. Sunday was um, mild again. <coughs> Pardon me. And today is in the 60s again, and it's been in the 30s at night, and it's raining. So I've already got all my chores done, and I've had people ask me when I find time to do my spinning. This would be the kind of weather that I do spinning on. So this is called roving. And it's a long, continuous piece of wool that has been carded in the... Worsted or woolen? I think it's woolen. Woolen is the kind where you see the big paddles that um, have the little tiny teeth on them. And worsted is using these. This kind of comb fits all the wool in the same direction, so all the fibers are parallel to each other. In this one, all the wool is mishmashed into each other and just kind of bunched and then stretched, and so it's it's in together, but it makes a loftier um, yarn. The, the yarn is puffy, whereas with worsted, it is drawn out and more thread-like. So that's what roving is. is It's something that has been uh, carded in the woolen fashion with a machine to make it um, uniform. I can make these roving with um, my, my cards and it's a little harder to get it clean than it is. These are really nice because they get your wool cleaner and get all the debris out and everything. They are um, they're kind of a lot of work to use and you have to prep the wool in a particular way and um, anyway this is what I do when it gets wet. If you don't have a spinning wheel it's not a big deal the biggest part of learning how to spin is learning how to draft, which is pulling the fibers out at a rate that will allow them not to knot and to be uniform so that you have the same amount, same count of threads in each twist as uh, that they all have that, that there's no breaks. So one of the best things you can do if you want to learn how to spin is to learn how to draft. And then you just use your leg and you roll you roll the wool on your leg to make a rope. And you get the characteristic of your wool. You learn how, how gentle to pull it, how hard to pull it, how not to pull it, and you can make you can make yarn just on your leg. Um, then you can get a drop spindle. I don't think this is one of the first drop spindles that I made and I just used a coaster a dowel and some little hooks, some little hardware hooks. And the most expensive part was the hardware hooks. Um, I don't like this because when I drilled the hole in the middle it's not exact and so it wobbles a little bit. Uh, you can use a, a rubber grommet and a CD. That would work much better than this does. But I didn't want to spend money, I wanted to see if I liked it. So when you're first learning how to spin, uh, you can get a supported spindle, which is one that stands in a bowl and on the ground rather than being suspended in the air. And um, But you don't have to. I mean, it just kind of depends on what you want to do. So you take some of your wool, and you spin it. And I need to make sure I'm going in the right direction. Okay. So I'm supporting this spindle because my um, my string is a little bit uh, thin. So I'm going to support it for a second to get it started. And I have a top whorl on this. And you can see that it wobbles and that's why I kind of hold on to it still. If you had a really good drop spindle, you wouldn't need to see that. But again, see, it warbles a little bit, which isn't what you want. So, yeah, my, my string is too thin. So, with that one, if your string breaks before it should, then it's, 
it's not a big deal. You it's, you don't have to start over. I should have wound it on to the staff. Um, because if you over if you over twist it, even if you have a good long sturdy string, if you over twist the yarn, it will break under its own tension. So I just retied it. We'll just start over. This string that I'm making right now is thicker, so it'll hold better. And I like drop spindles. I like to be able to carry them around. You can you can put them up on a shelf, and your baby won't get into it. Whereas with like, okay, so you unhook it at that point, and spin it onto the bottom shaft, and then rehook it. You don't have to have a hook here. You can just you tie a half knot on the top that you loop and unloop, but I don't really. I think that it's nicer to have a hook. But again, if you didn't have the material, I mean, you could make this out of a stick and a potato, and it would work fine. But that's how you do it, and when you ply what you've done, when you put two pieces of yarn together, I unwind all my yarn off the staff, so this is where all your yarn collects. I take all that off and roll it into a ball and put it in a jar with a hole through the lid so that I can unwind it. And then you just do this in the opposite direction. You spin in the opposite direction with the two pieces tied together and that's plying. So you can do everything on a drop spindle that you can do on a spinning wheel without the cost. So if you want to see, let's see. I'll show you how to do the. This is how you do the the knot, see? See how I did that? How I made that loop? So I don't have to have the hook. It just means that every time I go to unspin to put it onto the shaft, I have to make that little knot. Which, you know, once you get used to it, it's not a big deal. I believe my children are outside chopping wood. That's what it sounds like right now. Their dad has told them not to use See how I made that little loop? I should go yell at them, but I'm not going to because I want to get the video finished. See how that wobbles? If you had a better drop spindle, it wouldn't wobble like that. But you can do this. So I can do this all the way down to the ground. You just keep spinning it. And when it gets that long, and the better your spindle is, the longer it'll spin without having to have anything done to it. It'll just keep going. Once you're done, and you're holding your hands up over your head, what you do is you just jerk it up and grab it bring it back up, wind it on. Sometimes you use your leg, but I like to just use my hand. And that's a drop spindle. You can't learn how to spin any cheaper than that. The, the most uh, difficult part of spinning is the carding. It is indeed the carding. Because the nicer that it's carded, see, and with with um, with woolen, you get slubs, which are pieces that are kind of their dad is going to be really pissed off about that. Um, little slubs in the wool that didn't get co carded in, short pieces, and just and you can see there's a little bit of dirt and debris in this. You don't get that when you do worsted, worsted. See if I have one. So this is a roll egg that I did myself. So I did it with my combs, my paddle combs instead of the worsted.